for the regular session meeting of the Board of Commissioners of the City of Tarpon Springs on Tuesday, November 2nd, 2018 at, 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 at uh, 630 roll call. Mayor Alahuzis is absent and excused. Vice Mayor Banther. Here. Commissioner Sieber. Here. Commissioner Kikta. Here. And Commissioner Carr is also absent and excused. Tonight's invocation will be given by Reverend Janet Tunnell, All Saints Episcopal Church. Please stand and remain standing for the for the for the Pledge of Allegiance. Almighty God, to whom we must account for all our powers and privileges, continue to guide the people of the United States and this community in the election of officials and representatives, that by faithful administration and wise laws, the rights of all may be protected and our nation be enabled to fulfill your purposes. Send down upon those who hold office in this city of Tarpon Springs, the spirit of wisdom, charity, and justice that with steadfast purpose they may faithfully serve in their offices to promote the well-being of all people. Through Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Item number 22 will 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 uh, will 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 uh, be deferred to the November 13th um, regular session per Charter Section 3H that requires a a, a supermajority for um, that kind of land purchase. We we will now go to public comments on items that will not be on the agenda th this evening. Good evening. I'm Chris Warwick. Say your address. 1607 Lonesome Pine Lane, Tarpon Springs, Florida. Thank you, Chris. And I'm Robin Sanger, 36 Ada Street, Tarpon Springs. And Chris and I are here tonight to talk about an event that's coming up this Saturday. It's called Stone Soup. Do your Vanna I'm White. Vanna White. <laughs> and uh, there. It's also known as Small Town Big Heart. So it's a citywide event, very low key, just to kind of showcase some of the cool things going on here in the city. And one component of it is a signature soup tasting at the depot, at the historic train depot. And um, we have six restaurants participating this year. And the tasting menu is original Mama Maria's. We'll have Agvo Lemono soup. Mm. Bread and butter deli chicken soup. Andros Greek grill, Greek bean soup. Tula's Trailside Cafe, chicken tortilla soup, Yankee bean, butternut apple bisque, and Mykonos will have their lentil soup. So uh, we're excited to be able to have this day to share with the community. We're going to have American Legion Post 46 will also be there with the Poppy Remembrance to represent veterans and, and to talk with veterans who may be coming by that day. Um, Tarpon Arts works with us as well to support whatever event they have going on that night which that night happens to be Will Ackerman, The Gathering Four Guitars, also an awesome event. And then we showcase Salipa Ratner. We do this in support with the Unitarian Universalist Church, 5G, Tarpon Arts, and the City of Tarpon Springs all working together. So we invite everyone to come by Saturday at the depot from 11 to 3, have some soup. We will have some celebrity soup servers there that day. Vice Mayor Banther will be there for a bit, uh, Commissioner uh, Kitka will be there for a bit, and I think Mary Alahuzis will be there. And I believe you're going to be busy. I have Commissioner at the seafood festival. Yes. I'll be working. Yes, I, yeah. I, I've heard. Yes, so it's great when you think about our small town, small town, big heart. How we can come together, and the the motto of of Stone Soup is sharing creates great plenty. So hope to see everybody there, and and it benefits, um, and it benefits Peace for Tarpon and the Shepherd Center. So we've revived this. With this. We ran this for four years in a row, about 10 years ago, to benefit the Shepherd Center. And since then, Peace for Tarpon has come into existence. So we thought, well, we'll just work together on this. So that's what we're doing. So appreciate everyone who can come out that day and join us for a little bit of delicious soup and just visit with some of your neighbors and friends and get to meet people. And all in all, I'd say, you know, it's going to be a good deal. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Is that it? Okay. We will now go to our to our, our proclamations. Uh, item number one is Veterans Day. Commissioner Kitka. 
Thank you. Proclamation. Whereas our veterans represent the very best of America, they have bravely answered the call to serve in the finest military force in the world, and they have earned the dignity that comes with wearing the uniform and defending our great flag. And whereas on Veterans Day, we honor all Americans who have served in the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, and Coast Guard, both in times of war and peace. And whereas Veterans Day gives us time to pay due respect to our veterans, and whereas we humbly thank our veterans and their families as we remember, honor their service, and whereas on Veterans Day we remember these heroes for their valor, loyalty, dedication, and encourage all Americans to recognize the fortitude and sacrifice of our veterans through public ceremonies and private thoughts and prayers. Now, therefore, I, Commissioner Susan Kicta, by virtue of the authority vested in the mayor of the city of Tarpon Springs, Florida, do by hereby proclaim November 11, 2018 as Veterans Day. And I believe I'm accepting, well, I'm, we're going to be also bringing this to the Elks Lodge as well. Um, Chief, are you? Yeah, I'll, I'll accept it. Okay. I don't have a plaque. Oh, do you have the plaque? That's for the next item or the third item. Okay. And I will also be presenting this to um, the Elks Lodge as well. Thank you. Um, is Major, Major Young is not here. Major Young has taken over, um, so I'll let Chief talk about it. Um, he's taken over this ceremony that we do at Craig Park, and um, since uh, Tommy has passed away, so thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Kicker, Mayor, Board of Commissioners, or Vice Mayor, Board of Commissioners. Um, this Sunday, November 11th at 11 a.m., we will be holding our annual services for uh, our veterans at the War Memorial at Craig Park. The Elks Lodge is heavily involved and usually get a really good turnout. So um, we would like for everyone to come out. It's a really nice ceremony. Um, like Commissioner said, Major Young has taken it over and you know it's really kind of blossomed from there. So um, please come out and join us and um, help pay respects to all of our veterans. Thank you. And there's a um, barbecue after the ceremony sponsored by the Elks Lodge right. there at Craig Park. Yep. And is our honor guard there as well? Yes, uh, both police and fire. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Are there any are, are there any pub, pub, public comments? At all? Any board comments? No. Item number two is Seeming Society, followed by a word that I can't pronounce, so Commissioner Sieber. <laughs> okay. <laughs> City of Tarpon Springs, Florida Proclamation. Whereas the people of Simi have always been instrumental in building the sponge industry and contributing to the creation of businesses and the civic community of Tarpon Springs. Whereas the Simeon Society, Taxiahus of Tarpon Springs, has contributed to the construction of St. Nicholas Cathedral in Tarpon Springs, the Tarpon Springs Hospital, and other projects. And whereas the island of Simi of the Dodecanese Islands of Greece has entered into a city city's, sister city's, city's affiliation with the sister city's, that's not easy to say, <laughs> <laughs> of Tarpon Springs. <clears throat> And whereas the city of Tarpon Springs is honored and privileged to celebrate feast day of Archangel Michael with the Simeon Society Taxiarchies of Tarpon Springs Panigiri style. Now, therefore, I, Commissioner Sieber, by virtue of the authority vested in the mayor of the city of Tarpon Springs, Florida, do hereby proclaim November 8, 2018, as a day of celebration in honor of the 85th Simeon Society Taxiarchies of Tarpon Springs celebration of Archangel Michael. And this will be mailed. Are there are, are, are there any pu public comments on this item? Are there any board comments? Okay. All right. Item number three is first graduate Tarpon Springs Library Career Online High School. This will be presented by Carrie R Rip Rip Calvis, our our our, our library director. Thank you, Commission. I'm very pleased to be here tonight to talk about our Career Online High School program and to celebrate our first graduate, Danielle Hunsinger. I'd like to just tell um, everyone about the Career Online High School program. It offers adults the opportunity to get an accredited high school diploma as well as a career certificate in their chosen field, all completely online. It's offered at libraries across the state and across the nation. and uh, it's funded through the state of Florida for our, the libraries here in our state. And they have a chance not only to earn their high school diploma and transform their life that way, but also to be 
prepared for the workforce with a career certificate in the high demand, high growth field like office management, child care, homeland security, customer service. There's a variety of different ones. And all people need to do to uh, be able to apply for this program is to be an adult 19 or over to live in Pinellas County and have a library card through um, the Pinellas Public Library Cooperative. Um, and if they don't have a card, they can apply and obtain one to do so. And um, we are so excited to have our first graduate, as I said, um, Danielle Hunsinger. She uh, has worked over a year and a half in this program. Uh, some, they do have the opportunity to transfer in credits if they've already earned credits. Um, and she had to, uh, she wasn't able to transfer that many in and she worked so hard in this program, we could not be proud of her. She's a Tarpon Springs resident, mother of three, and we're so excited to um, acknowledge her for her achievement of uh, graduating from the Career Online High School program and earning her career certificate in Homeland Security. Uh, and so I believe uh, the commission wanted to um, uh, award her a plaque. You want, you, you, want, you want us to come around now or? Yes, oh. yes, if we could uh, give her the plaque and then take some photos. And before we head over to the library, we're going to have a, a reception sponsored by the Friends of the Library. They're going to be awarding uh, Danielle a tablet to continue her uh, education and, and um, career studies. Uh, Danielle would like to say a few words. <laughs> Thank 
First, I would like to thank the Most High and my ancestors for the strength within me. Also, the library staff for the opportunity they have given me, which was to achieve my high school diploma. Next, I want to thank my mother and father for lending me an ear when, and cheering me on when my lower self had the best of me. Last but not least, I want to thank myself for accomplishing something that I thought I couldn't achieve while becoming my higher self. Now I'm speaking to whomever needs to hear this, especially my children and my nieces and nephews. Don't let anyone or thing determine who you are. Only you can do that. Your brain is your weapon. That's how you fight back. Remember, knowledge is power. Thank you. Are, are, there, any, are, there, are, there, are there any public comments? Hearing none, uh, commission comments. I just want to say um, I wasn't aware that we had this program. I, I think it's fantastic. I think better yet that we allow them to specialize in the area to then go on and, 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 and get a trade. So I think that, that that's just amazing and that we have the here in TARP. And we need to uh, advertise this more. I think there's many uh, working adults here that could take advantage of this. And congratulations to our, to our, to our, to our, to our, our, our graduate tonight. That was not easy. Especially being 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 a mother and working, so all all, all the best to you and the example that uh, that uh, you have set, Mr. Seaver. Yeah, I echo uh, Vice Mayor Banther's uh, comments. Danielle, it's amazing that you could do this in a year and a half instead of four years, like most people uh, do uh, through uh, high school, and to also come out with a certificate um, in, in a field that you're interested in. So congratulations, and yes, we do need to uh, make this program more. Uh, aware and available um, so others uh, in, in TARPA know about it. So um, congratulations. Thank you. I just, you know, I echo my uh, vice mayor and my fellow commissioner here, their comments, and I just want to say, you know, I wasn't aware we had this program either, and I think this is just fabulous. Um, I just hope she's the first of many more to accomplish their goals. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we will go on to our to our consent agenda. That's items four through through fourteen. Are there any items that uh, that you you would like to pull, Mr. Sieber, Mr. Tika? Hearing none. Are there any are there are, are, are there any public comments on these items four through uh, through uh, through fourteen? Seeing none, the chair will will um, entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Roll call. Oh, sorry, comments. Any comments? No. Comments. Um, a roll call. Commissioner Kikta? Yes. Commissioner Sieber? Yes. Vice Mayor Banther? Yes. Okay. We'll now, we'll, we'll, we'll now go on to our special consent agenda, item number 15, select Icon Consulting Group Incorporated for uh, RFQ number 180147-S-JJ Stormwater Engineering Services Continuing Contract. City Manager. I'll turn it over. Robertson. Good evening, I'm Bob Robertson, Project Administration Department Director. Uh, with this item, we're requesting the board's approval of a new five-year stormwater continuing contract to provide engineering services by ICON Consulting Group. ICON was selected through a competitive process and was the highest ranked firm. Uh, funding for services will be provided primarily through the Public Works Department Streets and Stormwater Division and Public Works Director Tom Function is here tonight if you have specific questions about the stormwater program. Um, but that's basically it in a nutshell, and I'm here for questions if you have any. Thank you. Are, are, there, are, there, are there any public comments? <clears throat> Seeing none. Are there, are, there, are there any commission comments? No comment. None. No. The chair will, will um, entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Roll call. Commissioner Kikta? Yes. Commissioner Sieber? Yes. Vice Mayor Banther? Yes. Item, item, item number 16, <clears throat> approve execution of agreement with FDEP <clears throat> for a grant funding for lease and construction of spoil site for Anklet River River Dredge Project. City Manager? Mr. Robertson, give the presentation. Bob Robertson, Project Administration Department Director again. 
Um, for this item, we're requesting the board's approval for the city manager to execute an agreement between the city and the state of Florida. This, through this agreement, the state will provide up to $676,046 in grant funding for the Ankle River Dredge project to be used for the lease and construction of the spoil site. Uh, no city matches required. The funds will be paid to the city on a reimbursement basis, and I will serve as the grant manager for the city and will oversee the reimbursement paper trail. Uh, the city attorney has reviewed the contract language, and that's essentially the summary of this item, and I'd be glad to answer any questions. Thank you. Are there any, are there, are there, are there, are there, there, are there any public comments at all? Um, I just want to say thank you, Bob, for your continuing efforts. I'm, I'm on this. This was a long time coming. You know, I know we had a backup plan in place, but it's always nice to have the state participate. And on the selection night, I hope people re, re, uh, remember those that helped us with that. So thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, Commissioner uh, Sieber? Yes, I just want to thank you, too. And I'm, I'm so happy we were finally starting <laughs> yes. to move forward on, on this project because it has been a long time coming, and you've been persistent in your, in your work, and thank you for that. You're welcome. Commissioner Kitka? Um, uh, again, I echo my fellow commissioners here. Thank you, Bob, for your hard work on this and everybody involved um, to secure these funds for us. Thank you. I will. I will. I will inter entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Mm. Roll call. Commissioner Kikta. Yes. Commissioner Sieber. Yes. Vice Mayor Banta. Yes. Item number seventeen: Approve execution of agreement with with uh, with 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 Duke Energy for for installation of electric vehicle charging station. City Manager. Yes, uh, this is something we've been working on for a while, and I'll introduce Bob Robertson for the third time. He's dominating the special consent agenda, yeah. <laughs> but um, to bring you something uh, I think very important that uh, the city's been wanting to do and come to fruition with Duke Energy. So, I'll turn it over to you. Thanks, Mark. Bob Robertson, Project Administration Department Director. I don't think I've ever had special consent all to myself in one night. Um, so with me tonight is Peter King. He's a project manager with the Electric Transportation Division of Duke Energy. And I'm really pleased to bring this item forward to you tonight. We are requesting the board's approval for um, the city manager to execute a contract with Duke Energy. Uh, under this contract, Duke would provide, under their new uh, park and plug program, uh, they will be installing eight new electric vehicle charging ports at four public locations, so two ports at each location. The four locations are City Hall, the Splash Park slash Dog Park, the Public Library, and the Recreation Center. These charging stations will be installed at no cost to the city and will be maintained by Duke Energy through the end of 2022, as outlined in the contract that was provided in your backup. Um, power to these Charging stations can be offered for drivers to charge their electric vehicles for free or for a fee, the option of which can be decided at any time, um, as the infrastructure and billing system will be in place when the installation is complete. At the end of the contract term, at the end of 2022, Duke may transfer ownership of the equipment to the city at no cost and with no warranties. The city attorney has reviewed the contract language, and as I mentioned, Peter King is here for any technical questions you may have pertaining to Duke's program. And just to add to that, uh, <clears throat> to get this project going, get it promoting the stuff, it, it would be my recommendation that we offer it free to begin with, and hopefully, you know, maybe we can do it. We'll see the cost and stuff, but this is our part of what we want to do in our sustainability plan. So at least for the beginning and through the process, it was good to learn. Usually you have to make a decision. It's good to learn that these machines can go either way and can be switched in any time and stuff. But as our part to the community and stuff, uh, we'd like to do these. I know there's been some questions about where we chose. We got to remember that these take up three parking spaces. So we had an inquiry about why didn't we put one at the Marine or why we put these places. Um, again, there the places, uh, Mother Mears Park, the Marine and stuff, losing three places, all you know from the ceremony yesterday and when you're down there in the places, all of those are problems. I know three places at the library are pressure too, but just to start this program and stuff, we didn't want to make an impact where the areas where there's intense parking. So that's why we're, that's why we chose these as the best places. Um, plus we want to be close to either alternate 19 or 19, easy for vehicles to get to there and kind of spread out through the city, try to spread out as much as we could on city facilities and stuff. Um, I don't know if you want to mention about the other possibly possible some other places going. You want do you want to talk about that now or 
If you'd like, sure. The, um, and what you're talking about is some other private partnerships that Duke is looking to do. And Peter can elaborate a little bit. He's here. Just a little bit to know that there may be a couple more yeah, of these offered more, to residents um, in our city at some at some <clears throat> private locations too. So we will have a lot of them throughout the city to encourage again the use of electric cars and uh, for for the value that it has. So. I'm saying anything. Oh, um, did you want to mention anything about the other sites that we're looking at? Well, uh, on behalf of Duke Energy, first of all, thanks for being part of the program and being interested in bringing electric transportation. It's coming at us in a, in a big way. So yeah, we're excited about Tarpon Springs um, and their interest. And we also have, I've talked to Bob, we would love to have some private businesses as well interested. We've got other types of charging and certainly um, are more than willing to work with some of these groups around Tarpon Springs to get some more infrastructure in place. And again, I wanna thank you because when, when we started this project, we, hoped, we were hoping to get one or two of these um, to get four of them and be able to place them in where we have to get four is just absolutely great and beyond our experience. So I want to thank Duke Energy um, for being able to give us four stations to place throughout the city. Um, so thank you very much. Are there are there are, are there any are, 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 are there any public comments on this item? No. I um I I I just I just, I, I just want to say I think this is this is a a, 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 a great idea. I know we've had um people come out recently and wanting more green initiatives and Marks I know has has been working on those since before I was elected even with solar and whatnot. So I think this 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 is a a a a, 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 a great step forward. Definitely won't 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 power my truck, but I know people that will benefit from it, and I hope we can get more af after the install. Commissioner Kicker, I mean, sorry, um, uh, yes. Sieber. <laughs> yes, thank you very much. I appreciate uh, you coming out from Duke and, and of course, Bob. Uh, when do you think the installation will be completed? So uh, with the execution of the contract, um, we'll move forward. It usually takes about 30 to 45 days, just depends on what kind of conditions we'll, we'll run into. What we'll do now is a formal site assessment. We'll have a contractor come out, look at the locations, the panels, and those kinds of things. Um, they'll go through the permitting process and let's hope 30 to 45 days we've got some charging stations ready to roll. Great. So two, three months. That's fantastic. Definitely much needed. Uh, and a lot of people have been talking about us becoming more sustainable in, in the city and, and this is a step towards that. So thank you very much. Thank you. And um, I am so happy to hear that we're finally moving forward with this. Like, something I've been asking for for a few years now and um, you know, our city is moving in a new direction and more, and we are more trying to be more sustainable. So this is a great step. Um, I, and one of my questions was to the city manager today. I was, you know, we're trying to figure out why these spots were chosen for the stations. And, and he did explain to me the parking issues, you know, we will take up some parking spaces. So, you know, I was hoping to maybe see something in the train depot parking lot or, um, I don't know if we can do one at the beach or not, but but down the road, maybe we, something we can consider. Um, I did have a question though. Will there be signage around town uh, to direct people with cars? Yes, we plan we plan to do that. That's why, again, we want to make sure one of the things then Duke Energy wanted too was the main routes all to 19 and 19. So yes, we do plan to put signage and let people know directionals to make it to all four of the places and stuff. Okay. It will be coming also. Yeah, so that, that would be real helpful. Um, and my other question is, are these ever um, powered by solar? Or how are they? So right now the stations are powered by electric, correct? Right. Are they ever powered by solar? You can do that, yeah. We've, we've had installations that, that are, are powered by solar. There are a, a few of those around the country, yeah. I think OUC down in Orlando has one in their uh, employee workplace. Do they? So is, the, um, is it something that we've looked at or considered here? Not really for this project. No. I don't know that we have the. Um, well, no. Have that as part of the. Parking. Yeah, our is that project. Part of the program, our or? part of the pro project is not solar. It's connected, um, but you can do solar with the EV charging stations. That is. Yeah. Possible. What our plans is. This is a start, and again, we thought with maybe one or two as a start. Four as yeah, a start is great. I was great. surprised to see. But four. again, <laughs> we plan on going forward either with grants or ourselves and doing them, and and as we add some and do that, that's what we'll look into doing and stuff. But this doesn't plan to be it. This is a good trial. We'll watch this a year or two and look at the expansion again. Sunset beaches, places like that to put them would be the places that 
either another grant from that's available or we just, you know, we budget it and, and do it ourselves with the success of this. So that, that's the plan. This is the start and then to branch out and do that. And we will be looking at, at solar, for, especially a place like the beach where we know it'll get the sunlight and stuff. Some of the places, you know, we know it'll get it there. So definitely we'll look at those locations where we can be powered by it. Um, that's what we look for for our future expansion of this project. Great. Well, again, thank you so much. Appreciate this. Yeah. Chair, will entertain a motion? Motion to refer. Second. Roll call. Commissioner Kikta? Yes. Commissioner Sieber? Yes. Vice Mayor Bantha? Yes. Addendum, I, addendum item um, n um, I, 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 number one, discussion, plaque recognizing past city officials for, for, for the auditorium, and that's my item. I talked to Mark um, after consulting with the with the, with the with the with the city clerks about a way to you know we're we're always trying to honor our past. I think all of us campaigned off that in some in 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 in, in though in uh, though in though in some way, shape, or form. And we we've had so many past elected officials. I know we have the mayor's pictures out out in the hallway, and we now have much to my dis 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 may our personal pictures in the water bill section and out here and upstairs. But I think it'd be really nice to have some sort of a large plaque on the wall that is just a small little nameplate for every past commissioner, city clerk, and city manager. Um, I, when, 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 though, when, though, when I, 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 I talked to Mark, he said the funds are easily available in our wards budget, and just I, I would, you know, I'm not, I'm not too set on on on, <coughs> on 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 where it goes, but I think somewhere here in the auditorium. Where 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 we meet would 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 be nice, and just a, a a a very nice way to honor past people like us that have come here before. Because as you know, as the years go by, names can can be forgotten, and we still have some people living today that were city commissioners back in the seventies. So um, I want I want I want to get board input. Obviously, we have two people uh, you know absent tonight. I want to get their input as well. But I don't know if you all had anything to add on that. What your thoughts were on that? So, uh, well. Thank you. I think that's a great idea. We do have a lot of uh, former mayors and commissioners and uh, vice mayors who, uh, you know, I think would be nice to have them honored. And uh, so, yeah, could I, I'm for it. Okay. I think it's a great idea. Yes, I would support you on that. Okay. And um, I'll, 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 and I'll, I will I'll work more with the city clerks and Mark as far as, um, you know, there was a discussion, do we do it alphabetically, which I think would be problematic or you know, I think starting in, in, you know, back to the first service and on and uh, yeah. some, some way that's easy and, and affordable to maintain. And uh, also, I, th I think it'd be a nice addition, too, for the Citizens Academy when they come here for Arts and Culture Night, that they can, they can, they can, they can see that they can see that board and, 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 and all those names. So um, I'll, I'll work further with the mark on that and then mm -hmm. hopefully get it done before I'm out of here in April. So all right. thank you. Okay. Are there are there are there are there, are, there, are, there, are there any public comments on this item? Hearing none. We'll go to ordinances and resolutions. Item 18, Ordinance 2018-25, Application 18-112, Special Area Plan Modification, SDC Second Reading, City Manager. Yes. Heather, a while we we'll give this presentation. Want me to go ahead and read the ordinance? I would appreciate that <laughs> if you don't mind. Ordin ordinance number 2018-25, an ordinance of the City of Tarpon Springs, Florida, amending certain sections of Appendix, P Appendix B, Community Redevelopment Area, and Sponge Docks Smart Code of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Tarpon Springs, Florida, by amending Table 4E, Subsection I, Building Function, by allowing 49 seats for food service establishments and transects where retail use is limited, Amending Table 5A Code Summary to change the building function from limited to open in the SDC transect. And amending Table 5B Subsection 6, SDC Marine Industrial Slash Commercial to change the building function from limited to open and providing for severability and for an effective date. Published in the Tampa Bay Times by title only on September 28, 2018 and October 26, 2018. This is a second reading and there's been no additional information um, since first reading. I can answer any questions that you may have. Are there any public comments? Go forward. You have you have you have four minutes. Please 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 state your your, your name and address. Pat Borowick, twenty six oh four Oak Circle, Tarpon Springs. 
and Jack Spurk has said that he will give me his uh, two minutes from him if I should need it. I don't think I will, but I might. Okay. Duly noted. Uh, I um, wrote to all of you a couple weeks ago about my response to this, and um, I thought I would just comment here in the open forum in case anybody hearing it or watching the video might have some suggestions that my thoughts might bring forth from them. Um, unless I'm missing something here, I think changing the designations of these three areas from restricted to open could be a really good thing. The city has a wonderful opportunity to solve some existing problems in this area and create a waterfront that is beautiful and more accessible to more visitors, including the residents of the city. You must be aware that such a change to the docks area requires financial investment by the city to create both an attractive area and ease with which to move about it. Do we, do I, do we have the money to do that? And are we planning for that money in our future budgets? What are your plans on paper for these areas? The response to those questions can't be, well, first we've got to get the modifications in place and then we can plan what we want to do. Yeah, that may be too late. You may be already started a free-for-all that will create a jumbled mess, which you have to deal with later at much greater expense. The following are some suggestions, which, if you don't like them in their entirety, might generate some ideas for you. The first one is, solve the parking problem that already exists there and will be made much worse with this proposed change if you don't proactively address it. Asking current business owners to share what limited facilities they have is frankly an unfair, unrealistic sidestepping of something that could doom this project before it's even realized. You need to take two facts into account in solving this problem. A, a business can't share parking space it either doesn't have or doesn't have enough of, so I suggest you forget that idea. B, the people who are now drawn to the docks, and that will be in the future, are primarily retired or middle-aged folks. The parking areas the city must create have to be a realistic distance from where you want them to spend their money, or shuttle service must be provided. Two, encourage restaurants of varying cuisines <coughs> for varying tastes and locate them on the water. When people are in retail shops, they're looking at the merchandise and not the scenery. As for those new shops, look for shop owners who want to sell something other than soap, shells, sponges, and t-shirts. The many that already sell those items on the docks don't need any more competition. Third, and this is a biggie, and I believe is very important to the future success of the docks. There are too few places to sit along those docks. What few there are, are next to a steady stream of traffic and plunked down on hot concrete. How many times have you heard, I'm hot, I'm tired, I'm sick of people bumping into me, we'll find some other place to go and eat, let's get out of here. And I've heard that in any number of tourist places for the same reasons. Also, when I've asked folks who are visiting me for the first time, if they'd like to go to the docks, and I tell them there's still functioning docks where people shrimp, fish, crab, and go out for sponges, their faces light up and they're eager to go. This change should not disturb businesses that make this a working dock area. If those businesses are succeeding, they should continue to exist and succeed uninterrupted. But once there, there's very little opportunity for guests or anyone else to see any of that, unless you're able to get a table on the railing at Rusty Bellies. And that's what I usually try to do for the guests that I have. Here's what's needed, and here's where the city's second opportunity comes in. Help businesses create and maintain a shaded river walk behind the seawall, I assume, that we're gonna have to raise given the current and future uh, flooding down there, with treed pocket parks along the way interspersed between the restaurants. By pocket parks, I mean places with some grass, peanut grass, which is easily maintained, those trees for shade, and just three benches set up like a three-sided rectangle with the open fourth side on the water end. Where there's a functioning boatyard, etc., 
bring that walkway back up to the main drag so they don't, we don't interfere with the work that makes the docks the docks, but we can still see them as we're walking. Please give this change, which could result in a beautiful as well as financially advantageous area, some serious and prolonged thought, some planning ahead for what you think could be, it could be, and what you want it to be. The changes are given two readings for a reason, and that reason is not to automatically approve something on the second reading if that contemplated change is not fully hatched. Take all the time that's needed. Slow down. This is an important change which will have a lasting effect on the docks, a most crucial part of our city, for the worse or for the better, which I, and I hope you, can foresee. Thanks. Other comments? Seeing, seeing none, are there any commissioner comments? I'm sorry, one in the back. Page name and address, please. Hi, I'm uh, Corinne Young with River Energy Fuel on the Sponge Docks in Tarpon Springs. Um, I'm, I'm hoping this is a positive uh, situation as well. It, uh, it just, we were just told about this. We were unaware of any change. Obviously, we are in a restaurant. We do not provide any seafood, but we do have the marine fuel industry and whatnot. Um, and we want to make sure we've been in this business since 1937, long before a lot of any other businesses were here. We're uh, fourth generation. And I'd like to know that we aren't in any kind of threat situation or things being done behind our back like previously done. Um, if people could just be upfront with us, we're willing to make certain changes, but we are fuel, we are fuel docs and we, we mind our own business, we do our own thing and, and uh, I just like everything to be upfront so we understand what's going on because the seating arrangements don't really apply to us. We need the marine, uh, as, as the previous lady was saying, we need the marine to stay. And with the dredge, which was a thankful thing to go through, uh, we're hoping more uh, shrimp boats and other grouper and fishing industry will come back to the area as it used to be, so flourished, along with the sponge boats and other. We have a very unique environment, and we think it's a, we have uh, dinner boats that come to us. We've had celebrities on our dock. Uh, we're quiet because we don't, we don't put ourselves out in the limelight, but we have a lot of things going on too, and, uh, and, and positive things in the area. So I'd like to just uh, be respected, you know, we aren't a merchant and we aren't a restaurant, but we are very tight-knit in the community. Uh, so I just hope this is a positive thing for us. Uh, we do have some concerns, because uh, we, we want to stay there, and our next generation is coming in behind us. So we don't want any to be forced out um, and I need to know that we have some security. If we could get some answers, I'd greatly appreciate that because uh, the rezoning isn't anything that any of us in that whole area knew about or requested. Um, I'm, I understand that it, a lot of it can be a positive thing, uh, but as you can imagine, you probably know where our facility is. And with 9-11 uh, and whatnot, unfortunately we had to we were forced to put fencing up around the whole facility and whatnot. We used to have art clubs and life was much easier, you know, 20 years ago. Uh, but, but we, yeah, we enjoy it there and we have, we have a lot of, uh, we had Real Life for Life events, we helped Julie, you know, Rusty Bellies and we're, we're, we're part of the community in a quiet way. And uh, we're always open for suggestions uh, for change, but we're kind of locked in with our industry. I was just concerned because we aren't, you know, a food server at this point, uh, and we are not, uh, not to say there's not options for that in the future, um, and we are not a merchant, so to speak. Uh, we're considered a wholesale jobber, but again, we've, our longevity here speaks for itself. We made it through a lot of tough times, <laughs> including BP and whatnot, so we're hoping our community stands behind us and, you know, keeps us informed. Um, and appreciates, you know, and if you have any ideas or suggestions or um, do you think this in any way would ever 
put us in a bad position, this uh, change of rezoning? I'm going to have staff respond. I'm sorry? I'm going to have staff respond after public comment. So okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I started to just speak after, but I, I've never spoken. So, <laughs> okay. But anyway, but thanks for the include dredging thing. That's amazing. That's going to help every kind of boater there is. So um, I really appreciate everything. And I did vote today. So <laughs> it makes a big difference. So I appreciate everything you all do. And thank you. All right. Thank you. Are there any other comments, public comments? None? Um, Heather, could, could, could you address, I know you can't, I mean, you can talk to her privately afterwards too, but in a generic fashion address if someone's grandfathered in or any concerns that this person should have it from, from River Energy? So um, the this, this particular district, um, the district that we're talking about, allows for marine and industrial uses. Those marine industrial uses are not being addressed at all. Those marine industrial uses are allowed today, will be allowed tomorrow if this passes. The only thing that this is, is doing is changing to open up the opportunities for properties that are down there and for property owners down there to provide for additional restaurants if they choose to, or to allow for retail at a, at a larger scale than what had previously been allowed. But the um, commercial and industrial uses um, that are oriented towards marine development are not changing. They would still be the same today. It just offers them a different opportunity. Okay. That's uh, Commissioner Sieber. Yes, uh, thank you, Heather. Yeah, and I'm glad you made that clear. Uh, that will not change, you know, what your business is down there or any of the businesses. Uh, it is, like Heather said, giving uh, other developers or business owners down there that own businesses to, to develop more <laughs> on their own properties. Um, and so you don't have to, to worry about that. Uh, I liked some of the suggestions that the other lady had, uh, and that's you know maybe something we can talk about in the future, but this rezoning right now is only uh, what's on the agenda, and, um, and I, I'm definitely for it. Commissioner Kicko. Thank you. Um, at our last meeting, we had some concerns from some of our restaurant owners down there, and, and I'm assuming, Heather, that that's been cleared up. Karen's talked to them. Or, okay. I'm, I'm just, you know, and I know that I think they, I think they got some misinformation and it's unfortunate. Um, it kind of stirred things up a little, but I, I, from what I'm hearing, they're okay with everything. Yeah, we're used to that. And, uh, Karen went down, made sure and ensure all of them and talked to them and remind them about tonight. Obviously with three weeks between meetings, we had time right. to and contact of, them. Right. And, and none of them have come back. So I'm assuming that they're fine with all of it. The chain. Certainly, this is going to make an improvement for one particular business that is right. down there that should they want to do any changes, it's going to make them a legally conforming use, which is going to make it easier for them to make the changes that they would want as they grow. Right. And, you know, we just we don't want to change um, um, the, the character down there whatsoever. That's not what this is about. Um, we all know how important the sponge docks to it are, are to us and, and it's an attraction and um, it, this is this is to enhance and to make the sponge docks better. Thank you. Is that it? I will I will entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Roll call. Commissioner Gigta? Yes. Commissioner Sieber? Yes. Vice Mayor Bantha? Yes. Item item I, 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 item nineteen resolution twenty eighteen dash dash twenty four applications eighteen dash one oh three and eighteen dash one oh four. Knit Neal Partner Site Plan Review and Conditional Use. This is quasi-judicial, um, City Attorney. This is a quasi-judicial proceeding where the Commission acts in a quasi-judicial rather than a legislative capacity. At a quasi-judicial hearing, it is not the Commission's function to make law, but rather to apply law that has already been established. In a quasi-judicial hearing, the Commission is required by law to make findings of fact based upon the evidence presented at the hearing and apply those findings of fact to previously established criteria contained in the Code of Ordinances in order to make a legal decision regarding the application before it. The Commission may only consider evidence at this hearing that the law considers competent, substantial, and relevant to the issues. If the competent, substantial, and relevant evidence at the hearing demonstrates that the applicant has met the criteria established in the Code of Ordinance, then the Commission is required by law to find in favor of the applicant. 
By the same token, if the competent, substantial, and relevant evidence at the hearing demonstrates that the applicant has failed to meet the criteria established in the Code of Ordinance, then the Commission is required by law to find against the applicant. Are there any members of the Commission wishing to disclose any ex parte communications or conflicts, conflicts of interest regarding this application this evening? Amen. Seeing none. Uh, anyone wishing to speak with regards to this application, if you could please stand and be sworn. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. So sworn. This is Resolution 2018-24, a resolution of the City of Tarpon Springs, Florida, modifying Resolution 2017-42 by approving application 18103 and 18104, requesting a conditional use permit and associated site plan approval modification to allow for construction of 87,477 square feet of mini warehouses in three buildings consisting of 610 units on property zoned highway business located on the west side of US 19, approximately 1,880 feet north of the intersection of East Klosterman Road and US 19 North, providing for findings, providing for conditions, providing for modifications that may arise at the public hearing, and providing for an effective date. Staff presentation. Thank you. Um, this application was uh, heard back in January and approved. Um, it's out on 19. It's adjacent to the Los Mexicanos restaurant and an existing multi, uh, multi mini storage facility that's the public storage facility. Uh, essentially what this modification is, is about the main building, building B, that is the large, um, build, the largest of the three buildings there, is being broken up in a different configuration. The resolution um, that we previously approved had the number of units static for that specific um, number that they provided to us. They have since um, decided to kind of break up the, and, and configure the space a little bit differently, so they're asking for additional units. Essentially, they're going from um, the 564 to 610. They have sufficient parking based on a parking variance that they were granted by the Board of Adjustment. They're currently in construction. Um, the other modification that they've asked for is the rear building that had been originally one building has now been separated into two buildings. So there's three buildings on the site instead of just two. Um, those are the two modifications on here. Staff is recommending approval. Um, the Planning and Zoning Board heard this and there were no concerns with this. There was no public um, participation for this. There's been a sign out on the, on the property um, for well before the 15 days um, and we have not heard anything for anybody concerned other than people just want to know what's happening on that site, which is a great thing. So um, the engineer's uh, record is here if you have any questions, um, but really that's what the modification is about. We're just basically changing, reconfiguring space inside the existing building the square footage doesn't act actually changing um, it's remaining the same are there any board qu uh, board questions for staff just uh, thank you to, to the well I guess we can't thank me yeah, 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 we, yeah I, I, I guess we can I, I, I just I just want to say I think that, that this is a a, 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 uh, a just great project it's appropriate for, for the area and uh, I think it, it's a good use of that space any board questions for staff no, I just also, I, I drive by there and I see the construction going on and, and uh, it's great to see that going up there it is needed and as uh, Vice Mayor Banther said, it's a, it's a great area to have that development happen, so uh, thank you. Does the applicant have any questions for staff or wish to make a presentation? Okay, are there any questions of the board, of the, are there any questions of the applicant by the board? Seeing none, are there any members of the public for the application? Any members of the public wishing to speak against the application? Seeing none, the public hearing is closed. Any, 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 any more comments? No. I will entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Roll call. Commissioner Kikta? Yes. Commissioner Sieber? Yes. Vice Mayor Banther? Yes. Thank you, good evening. Thank you. Item number 20, resolution 2018-26, Public Works Re Re Reorganization, City Manager. Yes. Um, both these items, item 20 and 21, are the result of longtime employees, at least in one case, uh, being gone. So these are some that may have been brought to you in the future, but because we've had employees leave and we need to refill these positions, this is an opportunity to, to, to look at the needs of the position and and before we put out the advertising changes. So the first one, uh, Mr. Function will talk about in his thing. And again, he'll tell you about the opportunity with, with some employees retiring and what he plans to do for the 
benefit of our workforce. Uh, good evening, Tom Function, Public Works Director. Uh, as a result of the up, two upcoming retirements, uh, the, the position request I'm asking for is to reclassify a parts technician number two uh, to a heavy equipment operator paid grade 10. Having a third heavy equipment, oh, I'm sorry, part, reclassifying parts technician paid grade eight to a heavy equipment operator paid, paid grade 10. As we transition from a general labor, we're becoming more into the heavy equipment and specialized equipment, a higher level of personnel will be required. In the yard waste, we're asking to reclassify yard waste technician two to a heavy equipment operator, pay grade 10. Having a third heavy equipment operator in our yard waste will allow us for better coverage and, and full service of facility, which is open six days a week. Our three employees will, in the division will now be able to work all aspects of the yard waste and also gives me some freedom for heavy equipment operators in other departments. Uh, there'll be no impact on the budgets because these positions are being vacated by long-term employees uh, where we're at the top of their pay range. So there'll be no impact on the budget as of, as of now. That's pretty much it. I'm open for questions. No, uh, thank you, Tom. I, I trust you know what you're doing and, and it won't be changing the budget uh, with the retirement of these uh, men. So. Um, Thank you. I, it sounds like a good idea to me. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Um, I know that we were in need of heavy equipment operators, so this I think is, will um, will help quite a bit, especially at the yard waste facility. I know we were short for a while. I think we had one guy, so this this is def this definitely will help. Appreciate it. Thank you. Are there, are there, are there any public comments? Seeing none. Uh, the the chair will entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Roll call. Commissioner Kikta? Yes. Commissioner Sieber? Yes. Vice Mayor Banther? Yes. Item number 21, resolution 2018-27, um, procurement services reorganization, city manager. Yes, again, in the same similar situation with Mr. Jacket and procurement. Um, just give a brief description of what you're trying to do. Again, this is another one. It's not going to have a budget impact due to the fact the person's been here um, for a few years before they left. So uh, just a quick, simple explanation, kind of a similar situation. We have an opportunity with a, a person leaving and going out to advertise to get a little bit higher of a skilled position. Jay Jackis, Procurement Services Director. Uh, the two remaining employees uh, will have being retired within two years. Uh, Kathy Morgan has got a year left. Uh, myself is two years. Uh, and I'm basically hoping to hire my replacement. Uh, rather than advertise the lower position, if we increase it by the one step, uh, they both bas basically do the same job. Uh, so that's basically it. I'm just trying to hire my replacement and not leave Mark in the, in the lurch when I go. All right. are, there, are there any public comments? Well, thank you for being uh, for, very for, forward thinking and Helping us replace you for your retirement, which I'm sure you're you're you are you are look, looking forward to. Thank you. Um, so, um, so Mr. Sieber. I didn't know Kathy was retiring in a year. <laughs> well, maybe sooner if we go with the uh, RFP for the uh, insurance. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and I'm sorry to see you leave too, but uh, no, it makes sense. And yeah, like uh, the vice mayor said, thank you for being proactive and thinking in, in advance about your replacement. And Kathy's. Yep. That's it. All right. The chair will 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 entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Roll call. Commissioner Kikta? Yes. Commissioner Sieber? Yes. Vice Mayor Bantha? Yes. And item item number twenty two ha, ha, uh, has been deferred. So that this so this concludes the re, the the uh, regular session agenda. Staff comments, Police Chief. Uh, no comments. Thank you, Vice Mayor. City Attorney. No comments. City Manager. No, sir. Ma um, Madam Clerk. Comments. Comments. Mayor's absent. Um, I'll go last. Commissioner Sieber. Uh, well, first I want to uh, congratulate Commissioner uh, Carr and his wife on the birth of their new little baby girl. Uh, so congratulations to them. Also, this weekend is a seafood festival on the Sponge Docks. That's an annual event that's very popular, so I'm hoping to see a lot of you out there. And I think the opening of the community garden is on Saturday. Am I correct, Mark? Thursday. 
Oh, is it Thursday? Okay. Thursday. Well, that's coming up on Thursday then. Uh, the community garden dedication. Uh, yeah. Our yeah. ribbon cutting wow. or gala for our, our community garden uh, on 116 Ring Street. So uh, I've been looking forward to that. Thank you. Commissioner Kicker. Thank you. Um, I just want to remind everybody that um, the Elks Lodge will be having um, their yearly Veterans Day um, barbecue after our ceremony at Craig Park at 11 o'clock on the 11th, November 11th, Sunday at 11. Thank you. Um, again, like um, well, like we said, I want to wish um, uh, Commissioner Carr on uh, though congrats on, on his on his new baby girl. I think they were supposed to come home from from from, from the hospital today. I remember those 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 days, and I'm sure he's anxious to get to to, to get home. We also wish the the mayor the mayor um uh some 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 good health. For him to miss a meeting and him being in the country is this the first time it's happened. So, um, I I have no further comments. So we we will adjourn at uh seven thirty one.